Now, less than 250 miles from Davos, where that economic summit is taking place, world leaders are gathered in another Swiss city, this time Montreux, for key talks aimed at bringing peace to Syria. Confusingly, it's being called the Geneva II conference, and it marks the first time that representatives of the Syrian government and the moderate opposition, the Syrian National Council, have been brought together under one roof. But so far, there has been little sign of a meeting of minds. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, is in Montreux. Was it as belligerent as expected, uh, Lindsay? Well, John, these talks have got off to an acrimonious start. So acrimonious that at one point the UN Secretary General publicly chastised the Syrian Foreign Minister for breaking the mood he was trying to create. The problem is this, that the Syrian government and its backers, including Russia, think this should be about what they call defeating terrorism. In other words, the rebels who are fighting the government. The rebels, on their part, and those who back them, including the Americans and the British, say this should be about President Assad stepping down. They have a code word for it. It's transition. And nothing that's happened in this opening day when people were setting out their stalls has done anything to narrow that great divide. Anyone who had hoped that the peaceful beauty of Switzerland would calm the minds of the antagonists at today's peace talks was dreaming. Back home in Syria, it was another day of war. Rebels were fighting government forces south of Damascus. The regime dropped barrel bombs on Aleppo, and more civilians fled the city. Here in Montreux, delegates from across the world gathered to set out their seemingly intransigent positions. There is no way, no way f possible in the imagination that the man who has led the brutal response to his own people could regain the legitimacy to govern. One man and those who have supported him can no longer hold an entire nation and a region hostage. Outside, a knot of Syrians was yelling slogans in support of President Bashar al-Assad. They'd come from all over Europe to back the Syrian government delegation as its most senior official launched a barrage of insults at the rebels and their backers. Representatives of states in this room are sitting with us today while the Syrian blood is on their hands. Countries that have exported terrorism. 20 minutes into what was meant to be a 10-minute speech, the normally mild-mannered UN Secretary General had had enough. How much do you, do you, do you have left now? I think five, ten minutes. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, two. it's not... Uh, can you just... Uh, you know, I will give you another you know, opportunity. No, no, I at can't the end divide the, my speech. You know, this, I must continue. You have already spoken uh, I, I, 20 I'll minutes. I'll do my best. To be can you just uh, wrap up in just uh, one or two minutes? Uh, just, no, I uh, can't promise you. I must finish my the, speech. Then the, I'll have to give uh, no, equal, no, no, I equal must time finish, to Mr. the Secretary. opposition the group. So Yourself, please. you live in New York, I live in Syria. I have the right to give the Syrian version here in this forum. So on he went, treating the assembled diplomats to more rhetoric on how the opposition were terrorists, traitors and monsters. The opposition leader was a little more measured, but no more conciliatory. We must clean the land of Syria while al-Assad is importing the mercenaries while pretending that he is facing terrorism. Who do you believe? Ladies and gentlemen, who do you believe? Behind the scenes, the diplomats and foreign ministers mingle. The rhetoric, they say, hides the hope that on Friday the two sides will talk, indirectly and maybe later face to face. But no one is betting on a quick and positive outcome. Still in Montreux, Lindsay, what happens now? Well, tomorrow the two Syrian delegations, government and opposition, head to Geneva. And on Friday, the UN Secretary General Special Envoy, Mr. Brahimi, will try and get them to talk to each other. They'll start in two separate rooms, and the Russians and Americans will also be there, advising their proxies, you might call them. And then the hope is to get them in the same room by the afternoon. We'll see if that happens.